Uh, my name is Jeff Gavin. I played in the band called The Bad Vibes. Uh, tell us about the origin of The Bad Vibes. We started in 2000. Uh, with, uh, me and two friends of mine who I grew up with um, decided, you know, we were a little bit older at the time and we decided we wanted to start a band and we just kind of did it. Um, no big backstory to it, just kind of did it. Uh, most of the Philly stuff I remember going to was Revival a lot of times. That was like later 80s, I'd say. Um, that's when I really started going. I kind of, I was on the edge of sort of missing Club Pizzazz. I was like Pizzazz once. I was a little too young. Um, Revival quite a bit is the one I remember for the most part. Um, we would go, you know, in between there, was City Gardens was like the place that we went uh, most of the time. At least, at least two, three times a month. But Philly was a little bit um, more scarce as far as shows go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I remember the, the earliest, the earliest um, truck show I remember seeing that sort of sticks out with me was Motorhead with Shemale Encounters and uh, a, a local metal band, Anvil Bitch, I think they were called. Right. <laughs> and, um, that's the er that's my earliest truck memory. That was might have been like eighty. 85, 87, somewhere in that range. Uh, a friend of mine, when I was in probably 85, 86, a friend of mine turned me on to, gave me a copy of Agnostic Front's first demo, and on the other side was some Bad Brains and the Chromax demo, and that just sort of changed everything for me. Before that, I was more like a metal guy, more Slayer kind of thing, and I, you know, I was pretty young, mm -hmm. so it was, you know, it just, it, 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 I didn't have exposure to it previous to that, so, but as soon as I heard it, it kind of, it changed everything for me. About the guy, or? I worked at Tower Records for many years um, on South Street, and Mikey used to come in daily. Um, and he used to make the rounds on South Street. And South Street was one of the places that he um, stopped in. So he used to come in and at the time, um, my ex-wife worked there as well. And he, Mikey decided that he had a thing for her. So he used to come in every day and sort of, you know, knowing that it was Mikey, it was harmless enough. Um, but it, it, he used to call her every day and ask her whether she's shaved and he likes hairy girls and I'm gonna bring you a candy bar and all kinds of things like that. And it went on for a good year until he decided that he wasn't interested anymore. When Mikey was when Mikey was cool and mellow, you could have a you know a conversation with him when he wasn't so much, he was a little bit uh, animated. <laughs> awesome. Um, <laughs> any particular uh any particular PA hardcore band that you uh, that you thought was underrated, didn't get the credit they deserve? Wide Eye. Wide Eye. Pagan Babies. Stark Weather. Those are my three main local bands. Yeah. Uh, Lime Cell. Um, yeah, those are the ones off the top of my head. Obviously. Pagan Babies to me was. Um, th they reminded me a lot of things that were going on in New York at the time, and I liked that sound quite a bit. Um, but they were they were locally based, so it was kind of cool to have that sort of band that wasn't so much, there wasn't a whole lot of that going on here, I feel like, at the time. And Peggy Baby sort of represented that sort of sound and that sort of attitude and that sort of vibe, but in a local setting. We used to play shows quite a bit with a lot of the, um, the bands that, that Jay did on the side. Um, So we we, we kind of had a, that sort of relationship, you know, playing si uh, similar shows and similar. Um, I remember a Halloween show at what was Revival, and it, it for a period of time it became something else for a minute before it was like a, whatever it is now. I think it's been multiple things since then, but for a minute in between 
whatever, they were having shows there, and they had one of the Halloween shows there. And I don't remember it being, I don't remember much crazy about it, but I remember it's, it's always a, a time where you see people who you haven't seen for a year, you know, like, a, like Wednesday night will be, or on Halloween. It's not so much to go and, and see the show so much anymore. It's more to go and see people who you haven't seen since last year. Mm -hmm. That's the fun of it for me. It was always a factor, you know. I mean, it is. It, it's different than what it was in the in the late '80s. You know, in the late '80s, it was a huge. Um, there was always an issue issue with, you know, more or more right wing based skinheads and and that sort of thing. And it was. I feel like you know that has changed over the over the years. Um, I don't know from what from what some of the younger people tell me who go to shows, uh, way more often than I do. It doesn't seem like much of a factor anymore. There might be a fight. There might be, you know, but it's not. It's not what it was. It was, you know, it was pretty. Looking back on it, it was pretty crazy at times. You know, not so much at the time. It just seemed like what it was. Now, looking back on it, it was, you know, there was some issues. I think um, there's a lot of positives with it. Yeah, I think it's it, it's a lot easier to get music out, um, whereas you used to have to make. You know, you, you would press up however many you could afford and give them to your friends and they would be passed along. Now it's a lot easier to, you pay for the recording and you can get it out to a, a way larger amount of people. Um, the shit talking thing, I don't know. I don't know much about it, you know. I'm older, man. I don't, I don't know much. <laughs> you know? I mean, everybody's going to talk shit. Somebody's going to talk shit all the time. Uh -huh. Is what it is, you know. You, that stuff can't be taken seriously. No, it's just been part of sort of what I've been from the time I was, you know, 14 years old, and it, and it stops, it stops being what you're into, and you sort of, it sort of becomes what you are, if that makes sense, you know. Mm -hmm. It's not, you're not so much, oh, I'm into this, I'm into this. It's it's what you are after a certain amount of time, you know, and it, you, you don't grow out of it. You know, you might not go to shows so much anymore, and you might not see the people you kind of came up with so much, but it's always what you are. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not something you outgrow. 